morning to all of you. I will be just speaking to you on the topic, the very purpose of research. When we take up the issue, what exactly is the purpose of research? The purpose of research is to make enduring contribution to the human society. When I speak of enduring contribution to the human society, research has become an important component in all the universities today. There would be no university in this country wherein the component of research is not in existence. That simply means every university gives importance to research. Whether the type of research that is being done is of a second rate or of a third rate or without any quality is left to the judgment of the university itself. But then research is very important. You just think of just think of the developments that have taken place right from the 16th century until the present. I shall give you two or three instances why research is important. Now one important development happened to be the discovery of electricity. Now this is a pure science wherein the concerned scientist was able to discover. And after the discovery of it, how it is being made use of by the society at large. Now unless some kind of research is being done, then by the concerned scholar, could this be possible? Would this be possible to discover power or the power of electricity? Then you just think of what we call as the telephone. And when the telephone was discussed, people were laughing at it. And the instruments, instrument has to be carried from here to there, from room to room. All of them, we read the articles. But then today, just see, remember, many of you may be having a small phone, you know, mobile phones, and others may not be even able to notice it, and still you will be recording. Now this is because of pure science, pure development. Now in addition to what we call as the discovery of telephone, Think of your computers. And most of research scholars prior to 1985, when they would do research in a library, they would collect the materials and write it by hand. And it was written. And most of the research scholars, I remember there were wonderful research scholars in JNU when I was studying. And they were saying this, see, that about 25,000 <coughs> pages of work material is written from the right hand. And this has to be written first, then that has to be taken care, then it has to be classified. And you think of the struggle which these students have undergone. And they have undergone this struggle and they are the best students because they have read everything. Unlike the present day students of research. Now today what is happening is because of the science and technology and its advancement. You just go to the library and just remember, uh, mark it and tap it and then store it and storing it is the end of the research three-fourths of it is not even read most of the students most of the students there are instances wherein we, we just give them some sources and afterwards we just ask them have you read it after case submission they say i could not read it truth comes out then now this is the type of research that is happening today because of the advancement of science and technology but then in those days there was no science, no advancement but only books and you have to go sit tight, read and take the extracts, write it and today how many of the researchers today when we speak of its importance you know remember uh, writing the material in a research card, what to be taken in a research card? Most of us, when we used to go to the libraries, we would have about five to six research cards each day. And then we start reading. When you start reading, then you come to know only this point or this sentence may be necessary, maybe. For the topic, it can be used somewhere in some chapter. I am speaking of social science research. And then you just jot down. When you jot down, you first say, name of the author, name of the book or the name of the article. Then year of publication, place of publication, 
And even once the sentence is written there, you put the page number. Now these days, most of them, they don't know. They simply cut it and paste it elsewhere. And there afterwards, you intend to arrive continuity of thought in your presentation. In those days, the process of mind was accurate. And this process of mind naturally led the scholars to produce wonderful things. Now, I just said, discovery of computer is an innovation. This has helped remember to so many people. I still remember when computer was discovered and used in this country and there was a chief minister. And this chief minister, remember, Lalu Yadav. And he said, computer, we will not allow the computer to be introduced in the office. Because there will not be jobs. If computer is introduced, now what about these fellows? And today what it is? Even in Bihar, computer is used. Perhaps, remember, it may be leading in some points with other states. Now well, these are, that is where I just say, science as well as technology is important from the point of view of research. This is the fundamental point which everyone should know. Now the second thing is, now when we speak of the importance of research, the research which you do should be of some use to society. And it should have societal value. And if it does not have societal value, for what purpose you are doing the research? Now, there are plenty of them, plenty of the research scholars there. Remember the title of the critical study of X and Y. Now, critical study of X and Y in what way it is going to help the society? How you will be in a position to use this in the development of the economy and bringing prosperity to the country? Now most of the people in this country, not only here, in the developing and the least developed countries have forgotten one important thing which is known as the prognostic type of research. Prognostic type of research, remember, based on the study which you conduct, based on the research which you make, you come to a conclusion that in the next 20 years or 25 years, the shape of things will be totally different. Now there was a great scholar, a great historian by name A.G. Wells. And A.G. Wells wrote a book in the year 1936 and published in 1937. And the name of the book is The Change of Things to Come in the Future. Now 1936, remember it was before the declaration of the Second World War. Before the declaration of the Second World War, remember all the materials Wherever it be, whether it is in the house or in the office or in the factory, we are made of iron. But then, he said, this is going to be replaced by plastic. The iron age is going to be replaced by, replaced by the plastic age. Now, he said in the book which he has written, no sooner within five years, remember, the iron age was replaced by plastic. And after 50 years or 60 years or 70 years, you just see, even computer chips are attached through a plastic material inside the computer. Now, in those days, buckets and other things were made of iron. <coughs> Present day generation will not be able to lift even, forget putting the water and lifting it. Even without water, he could not lift. That was the start state of affairs, but then he is the one who predicted, and that is the shape of things that came to the society at a later stage. Now, there was another person, for example, prognostic type of research when we make the great Karl Marx, you think of him. Karl Marx happened to be a person, remember, a German. Being a German, he was just witnessing what was happening in the society of the state of Soviet Russia. Remember, he was interested in current things. And when he was interested in current things, he was just watching what was happening in the state of Soviet Russia. Soviet Russia at that time was ruled by the Tsar. And the Tsar, remember, created two types of societies. One is the rich and the other one is the proletariat, the poor people. And this fellow used to read the newspapers on a day-to-day -day basis. Having read the newspaper, he would interact with many people. And he would interact with the learned people of the time. 
interaction is very much essential to develop the critical faculty for any scholar. And critical scholarship develops only through discussion. And afterwards, remember, he went on watching it for several years, five or six years. And what exactly was happening in the social society? The Tsar would loot the poor, that is the ruling family or the ruling class. And the nobility was given a share. But then the poorest of the poor was not given anything and they were hunted down and booted. But then there would be a struggle. They would say, protect us, give us at least a bit of the cake, part of the cake, when you eat, share with us. But then the Tsar was not prepared for such a thing. So in this situation, what has happened was the fight started taking place. Now in 1848, he published two books. One is The Poverty of Philosophy and the other one relating to the theory of social engineering. Now in this, one is The Das Capital and the other one is The Poverty of Philosophy. Now in this book he was just saying in the state of Soviet Russia the struggle is continuous because the lawmaking power is actually with the ruling class. They can enact a law, pass a law, impose heavy penalties and punishments. And once they impose heavy penalties and punishments, naturally nobody, remember, can withstand them. But then the fight is fight, opposition is continuous. And this opposition is continuous and one day they will be able to overthrow the Tsar. The ruling family will be out and in its place the dictatorship of the proletariat will be established. This is what he said in 1846 and 1848 in Das Capital and the Poverty of Philosophy. 68 years later, 68 years later, the Bolshevik Revolution took place in 1914 and in 1917. The Bolshevik Revolution, remember, replaced the Tsar and the communist society of the future was established. See, this is the importance of research. The very purpose of telling. Remember, he was a man, he was just like an educated man looking to the happenings in the society. And a man who was looking to the happenings in the society was able to see the shape of things to come. And in 1848, he said in 1917, remember, Russia was headed by Lenin as the general secretary of the Communist Party of the state of Soviet Russia. Now, before that, remember, there were great social thinkers. And these great social thinkers, remember, especially during the course of the French Revolution, and these great thinkers, remember, were just observing what was going on in the French society. And in the French society, especially the French monarchs, remember, were ill-treating again the poorest. The nobility, remember, would treat the poorest as not human beings, as animals. When crops were grown in the wheat field, when it was about to be harvested, this, hunt, this became a hunting ground for the nobility. But the ruler, remember, again, they were dangerous. Now, in such situations, there appeared two scholars. One happened to be Rousseau, and the second happened to be Voltaire. I am speaking about impact research now. Now, they, they are the scholars who just remember was looking to what was happening in the society and on day-to-day -day basis they started writing. And Rousseau produced the social contract. And in the social contract, remember what he says in the first page, man is born free but everywhere he is in chains. Man is born free but everywhere he is in chains. Remember this sentence was a magic sentence to human civilization which lit the fire of French Revolution. <laughs> the moment he said the people wanted to assert their light, then we come to what we call as the fraternity, liberty and equality. These are the three slogans on which the human society fought. Now the purpose of saying this, remember as social thinkers they were able to visualize. 
and what was written by them. For example, Will and Ariel Durand wrote 10 volumes. And 10 volumes, remember, most of it are on the pages of history, history of the world. Now, volume 3, Age of All Time, runs into 1000 pages. And volume 4, The Age of Rousseau. And if you read a bit of them, what type of scholars they are, what type of imagination they had, what type of fertile mind made them to jab their pen when they wrote something. Voltaire, remember, says Willurand, Italy had Renaissance. The, the birth of Renaissance movement started in Italy. Germany had Reformation. The entire birth of Reformation movement have taken place in the state of Germany. But France had all time. That means you compare, he was com comparing this to a movement. And we just said comparing this to a movement, no, what happened ultimately? The revolution came and the people rose in revolt. Louis XVI and others were, remember, guillotined. This is because of the writings. And the writings and asking the people to champion the cause of human rights. Then you have a saga of history. That is where, remember, you must have done something and later it is being followed by others. Now, it is an improvement. And these improvements have led to the original contribution. So this is applicable even science as well as in arts and in humanities. Now, when we go deeper into the topic, we can just speak of what we call is, remember, action research. When I speak of action research, remember, it is something relating to the ongoings in the society. It is a developmental research. And it is not only a developmental research, it is a societal, sociological research. And it is action oriented. Now you think of what we call as the legislations which are passed by the government after the Nirbhaya case. The Nirbhaya incident, most of you being law students, you know. And remember, it was difficult for women to walk after 6 o'clock on the streets. They were raped, they were condemned. They were condemned to death. Now in such situations, remember, the legislations came in. And when the legislations came in, remember, you just think of the legislation which was passed in the year 2013. And in the year 2013, when the legislation was passed, they said, there were three or four things are punishable. The amendments were brought to Article, sorry, Section 354 of the Indian Penal Code. 354A, B, C, D were introduced. 354A speaks of what? Sexual harassment. B speaks of sexual assault. C speaks of what we call as voyeurism, following a woman without her knowledge. Then the other one is stoking. Now all these are punishable. All these were made punishable. Now this legislation because, because of the incidents that were taking place in society. The lawmakers thought that law is very much essential to regulate and control this. And the point is, remember, whether it has come just like that, those who have seen the movies or the TV debates that were going on in the year 2012 and 2013, movements have started against the government. What the government is doing, whether the government is competent enough to have a legislation of this type, why legislation is not enacted. And at that time, the matter was referred to the Law Commission and the Law Commission, having referred and studied the matter, they reported. And when they reported, remember, the legislation came in. And when the legislation came in, remember, they were able to do it very rigorously. And many people had to undergo our prison. Now, the other important development is, see, for example, most of you are in the campus. When you are in the campus, you now acid attacks used to take place. And this acid attacks used to take place in, uh, it became common and many had to suffer. In a situations of this kind, there was a debate in the parliament. 
what the universities are doing are they not able to protect girl students and should we have an amendment to the indian penal code and if the amendment is necessary for this what type of amendment should it be then they brought in our oh, section 326a and by way of an amendment to the indian penal code what did they say in the event of an acid attack the concerned person the doer will be punished from 5 years to 7 years for the first time see for for example the matter when it goes to the court of law don't be under the impression that they don't do research the judges themselves remember they read several books they refer to several incidents that has taken that takes place around the world there are afterwards they just remember examine what should be the law for a society like india then they said remember legislation should be like this and a fear of five years rigorous imprisonment the imprisonment should be put into the mind of the doer that is how it can be prevented now i can give just give you wonderful illustrations uh, on the subject of this nature now another illustration happened to be an illustration relating to after the passing of this criminal amendment act of 2013 as a researcher you should be in a position to think about how this legislation is implemented whether this legislation new legislation providing strict punishment is implemented if at all in which way state how many convictions have taken place which states leads in convicting the people and remember whether anybody has claimed victims compensation today you know most of the discussions take place on victims compensation and when we say courts are supposed to give preliminary orders and then they are after to replace this with a final order compensation for life for the victim those for example in an act of rape or in an act of acid attack if she is completely defaced and she is immovable in situations of this type she will be given compensation for life and it is being implemented through the legal service authority and compensation fund is being created and a fund is being given to the legal service authority at the government level at the national level and portion of it is dispersed and distributed to each state how much is being distributed who are the beneficiaries how much benefit is being given so this is what we call as a sociological research wherein it benefits the party now there are fruits i think just we could you speak to you something relating to another type of legislation which as students of law you should know right to information act was passed in the year 2005 and when the right to information act was passed in 2005 several questions of this legislation came in in during the time of corona how many of the uh, people in the villages were given employment you might be knowing under manrega the the government goes to the extent of pointing out now 100 days work is being given as remember with wages to any any worker who is prepared to work so if you don't have any job the government will give you a job a free job with a salary for 100 days announcement is being made but have you made an inquiry how many of them got the job how many of them have got the job then got the money simultaneously now there are certain stumbling blocks and loopholes announcement is made but yet to be implemented not implemented then they say nobody approached us then how best you can reinforce rigorously the right to information act now there are instances i can just tell you professor ishwarbhati is here we have conducted a study when we were in west bengal and we went to certain panchayats and when we went to the panchayats when we started making a study now we came to know that panchayat members themselves are not aware of the right to information act and they are to be educated and whether the mode of spreading the information is right how they spread the mode of innovative uh, uh, mode of the message these are they are also not sure of it and they have to be educated this is the act which is meant for everybody and people should be made use of 
and they should be educated to make use of this legislation. Now I can just tell you another legislation, another legislation, remember all these are, now important, speaks about the importance of research in the society and most of it relates to the present day. The Karnataka government has passed the Guarantee of Services Act in the year 2011. And thereafter, it was followed by the state of West Bengal in the year 2013, followed by the state of Maharashtra in the year 2015. Now, Guarantee of Services Act means simply, suppose for example, you are a person and your problem is not resolved by the government. So in the event of non-resolvement, you can go to the concerned office, Vidhan Sauda or Secretariat or Tashinda or a Revenue Inspector and get it resolved. Now it was considered as a wonderful legislation. So it was considered as a wonderful legislation, the government itself comes forward to resolve the problems of the citizens of this country. Because you say, if you go to the Taluka office or some other, there is nobody. And they are not listening even. After the passing of the Guarantee of Services Act, remember, everything is resolved and you should have been able to get justice within five months, come what may. That is, remember, the such a last point. You should be in a position to get justice immediately, but within five months, the case has to be closed. Now, this is a legislation. Remember, how many of them you can conduct a study? In Karnataka, in a particular district, you just go there. How many of them had problems of this nature? Which body they have approached? What exactly was the nature of the complaint? And what was the response of the authorities? How did you manage to go? Because everything is fed into the computer and you will come to know where exactly your application, the location of your application, you come to know by sitting here at home. But then, whether the people are happy, if the people are not happy, you should be in a position to point out why they are not happy. This is the type of research, remember, which will enable the government to rectify the stumbling blocks in the existing legislation. In the existing legislations, remember, when they thought of doing it, they did. It is pakka then. But then at the implementing level, you have several problems of this nature and that has to be overcome. So in order to overcome this, they uh, remember, amendments are brought. Now, there are instances, especially two instances, I will just speak to you from environmental law. When I speak of instances in the area of environmental law, which I just intend to tell this house, that even in the area of environmental law, the Supreme Court has made wonderful research. When I speak, speak about Supreme Court itself, say, get the research done through some people, the top class people of this country. Now, what has happened was, a hazardous waste legislation was enacted by the government of India. And this was, remember, consequent to becoming a party to the international legislation or the Basel Convention on the Transboundary Movements of Hazardous Waste. And after the passing of the legislation, what has happened was, waste was coming to this country. Although India became a party to this legislation, remember, uninterruptedly waste was coming, remember, by way of export from the state of France, from some other countries. Mostly this waste used to come from organization of OECD countries, European Cooperation and Development. Now, at that time, Vandana Shiva filed a public interest litigation before the Supreme Court of India. And in the application that was filed, she was just saying that we have become a party to the Basel Convention and without prior informed consent, the waste comes to this country. And when the waste came to this country, remember whether the authorities know this or not, whether they are ill-equipped, whether they are not in a position to understand the, the essence of the legislation, it is being dumped in our backyard and it has caused a series of environmental problems. The government of India, the Supreme Court of India, having heard the argument, immediately appointed a committee. And a committee consisting of top class eminent people, it was chaired by chairman of the committee, happened to be M.G.K. Manor. And six others, it was a seven member committee. 
and this committee was asked to investigate study and make a thorough examination and then submit the report to the supreme court of india see why research is important because this committee did not submit the report in 4 days or 8 days it took 4 years and it took 4 years and visited every industry and most of the industries were visited by this committee and most of the hazardous waste dumping sites were visited and ultimately remember after 4 years it submitted a report of 1200 pages and in this report remember what they were saying is because they were given 14 tasks and on these 14 tasks the committee was asked or asked to research and submit the report and these 14 tasks individually were taken up by the members and they wanted to do the research and did the research and in the report they took one by one now certain things i just intend to bring home because most of us we think that everything is pakka it is not pakka i just wanted to tell you the report points out in this country there was not even one single landfill till 1997 there was not even one single landfill in this country till 1997 and most of the landfills when they were, when they were structured it was not structured or built in accordance with the, the scheme of things which are required to be done and most of the landfills remember which were built were built for three months of disposal of waste and ultimately after three months it became a permanent disposal ground Think of the hazardous effect of it. Can you, when they say this can you know, sustain only for three months to keep the waste, but after three months you keep on, remember, generating and producing and transporting to this landfill. This has to be stopped and there should be smaller landfills. And some of the landfills the committee report points out, remember it was built in certain areas wherein you have a, the road is on the slope and what happens is from here that when it is dumped inside this it slowly percolates and goes down to the dead end and the people who are living by the dead end side of the road ultimately are infected with the, the diseases which was beyond discovery of their disease they were not able to even find out this is what has happened then the other important thing these days is see the definition of waste can be done by anybody now the government of india was asked to take a definition of waste all the government 185 states with their parties there are 185 definitions of waste what is waste in your country is not in my country so if it is not in my country it is a waste you transport the waste to my country and dump it and there's a there should be a uniform definition and this has to be looked into the company and most of the other things i can just tell you you know the practical aspects of it as scholars and researchers if you have just know a bit of it you will come to know the it of it you just see pollution control board and you see members of the pollution control board members of the lower bodies and when you think of the members of the lower bodies they are not even aware of anything about environmental law, much less the spelling. And such people who come at the behest of the government and destroy the generation without a proper environment. Now, under Article 21, you might be knowing, many things are being spoken, it is being interpreted and reinterpreted. Right to health, right to medicine, right to food. You have everything, right to livelihood. All of them are fundamental rights today. And all of them are not even, remember, honored and respected. But this is how it is being done. See, the point is, I am not speaking about, unless you do the research and get to know what exactly is the present position, can you pass a judgment? And the concerned judges, both of them, oh, well, not Chinna Paridi, the other one, yeah, really, two of them, remember, they went to the extent of... Uh, pointing out that it should be the, the, the report became a part of the judgment. They said certain portions 
of the report has to be implemented by everyone and this are to be implemented through the pollution control board or the government of india that is how remember environmental law is gaining importance there are many other things uh, which can be spoken at length now the, the, the in, in addition to this there are other parts uh, wherein uh, social science research is helping to almost all the people in research now the last part of the uh, story is now review of literature that is the last one now when we review the literatures for example recently i was just going to a phd thesis in the phd thesis remember 48 pages are written on review of literature is he writing a, a thesis on the review of literature i am just telling you because I, most of the things you know as a researcher but earlier it was not there now these days remember the review of literature is very much essential but then it is not to show that you have read so many books now you have to put only those books which are relevant to your chapters now whether some of the issues which are taken by you are in agreement with or in disagreement only those books a few of them are supposed to be taken there not all of them and if you just write like that most of it remember now just to show that in the review of literature even uh, in the llm program uh, somebody has written about 8 pages on review of literature is it required you just think of it it is not required a few pages remember about five or six important books one is the book which has given but to the genesis of your top topic the second one is the latest topic what exactly is the present position the third one what is the development in between from the genesis to the present and a few articles if is required and that would be enough yes, remember to cover in two pages or three pages there is no need to have 48 pages of review of literature and most of the time remember when you start reading the literature you come to know it is essential it is essential but then most of you will come to know when you start writing it as i have not essential at all that is where i just made a reference to a scholar who said he has written 26000 pages from this hand and he himself could not classify and refer to it so that you will get to know only when you start writing not in the between when you start writing you will just spread over whether it is essential for chapter 2 3 4 5 then conclusion and you start separating it but remember half of it will remember you cannot put anywhere neither in those chapters then you say i can put somewhere in conclusion even in conclusion you cannot book hey put it because when we were students in jnu i am just telling you not a photo exaggeration is a real work which we have done we used to work in the jnu library in the 8th floor and there were as many as 31 international journals which we used to get in the 1990s first we will exhaust the material from there and having exhausted the material from there then we will go to the indian law institute and in the in the, the indian law institute we used to go freely because jn you had a bus if you have a pass you can get in and go they will drop him this is the test in almost all the libraries every day and there are to the indian law institute to go there because you should know what exactly is the indian law what exactly is the indian point and you study there collect the material for about 3 months or 4 months then you go to the agency library that is indian society of international law and in the international law you have the wonderful journals most of it are found in jnu library also then you collect the material and some scholars will be coming on day to day basis have a discussion with them have interaction with them then you have sapro library nearby one for one 
And in Sarpur library, we would go because most of the students were working in the area of political science, would go there and work. And we talk to them and they will also help us in getting some material. Now when this is done, remember for policy matters, we used to go to Tinmurti library. They have extensive material on all subjects, especially when you start working on policy research, Tinmurti library then was the best, I don't know now. And most of the students, the library will always be full. And they would go, they start reading, they get to know, they discuss. Many people, scholars used to come and sit there and read, like us, like students. This is, at that time, you come to know which material is relevant, which is not relevant. No, you cannot decide without reading what is material, what is not material. And if you do that, you will be material. That should not happen for any student of law. Once again, I thank you for this opportunity and take my time to take over.